In 1905, physics genius Nikola Tesla submitted his U.S. patent 787412, which was titled The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural Medium. It included designs for a series of worldwide generators. Tesla realized that the ionosphere was sparkling with electrical energy which could easily be tapped. Planet Earth, according to Tesla, was a gigantic electrical generator spinning around two magnetic poles from which limitless energy can be harnessed using the right medium or shape. His device was later referred to as Tesla's electromagnetic pyramid, based on his design looking like a triangle shape. Tesla tapping into the actual shape of the pyramid, I believe was something that, that just came round about through his investigation into the location of the pyramids. Because what appears to have happened is that he realized that it wasn't the actual shape of the pyramid so much, although pyramids uh, exhibit uh, fractal energy much more efficiently than other types of designs. But what he discovered was it was the location of the pyramids that created the power. And when he, he built his uh, facility here in Colorado Springs, and then um, on the East Coast, he did so according to the laws of where the pyramids at Giza were constructed. And it had to do with the elliptical orbit of the Earth and those sites' relationship to the actual equator that there was an actual construction somehow taking place between those very specific sites and the overall energy field of the Earth. And because of that, he believed he could transmit power wirelessly. Tesla's discovery and device disappeared after his mysterious death in 1943. But what he was trying to tap into might have just scratched the surface of understanding the power of something much more ancient. According to Nikola Tesla, 369 is a key to the universe. Tesla became so obsessed with this 369 that he would drive around a building three times before going inside of it. He cleaned his place with 18 napkins, lived in hotel rooms only with the number divisible by three. He made calculations about things in their immediate environment just to make sure the result was conceivable by three. And he based his choices on the results. He did everything in sets of three. What is Nikola Tesla trying to make us understand? We must understand that we did not create mathematics. We discovered them. It is the universal language and law. No matter where in the universe you are, one plus two will always equal three. Everything in the universe obeys this law. These forms are in nature, but the ancients emulated these forms in construction. If Nikola Tesla's obsession was with these numbers, and his goal was to define his location and time in space, could it be possible that ancient humans created monuments like the Great Pyramids to remind us of these truths? In Sumerian tradition and in the surviving texts, there is a very strong and intriguing reference to what are called the seven antediluvian sages, the, the seven sages who came before the flood. And their leader is a figure called Oannes. We find that he is depicted as a man, but curiously, he's wearing a sort of fish garb or a fish costume. Uh, archaeologists often refer to him as a fish garbed figure. And the other seven sages are also dressed in this fish costume. So you see the legs of a human being, and the face and features a bearded human being, but then he's wearing on his head uh, the head of a fish and the body of a fish hangs down his back. It's a very, it's a very curious idea, really. Um, and he and, and all of them hold in their hands uh, a, a curious little bag, which I tend to refer to as a man bag. I see them as a kind of badge of office, uh, a, a recognizable symbol where, where perhaps members of a brotherhood would be able to recognize one another by their carrying of this symbol. It's curious that we see a figure holding the same bag that we see on the Sumerian reliefs and holding it in exactly the same way. And not only that, but those same bags turn up on top of Pillar 43 in Enclosure D 
at Gobekli Tepe, where we know that they're at least 11,600 years old. The tradition is clearly rooted before the flood. Then comes the flood, the cataclysm wipes everything out, but that brotherhood persists through the flood. And, and after the flood, they are again offering the gifts of civilization to, to mankind. Could Oannes and his sages have re-emerged after the cataclysmic flood to teach the knowledge of the universe? In Sumerian cuneiforms, Enki is sometimes depicted as a bearded man wearing a fish costume and sometimes carrying a bag. Interesting to note that in the Egyptian depictions of gods, they are not holding a bag, but an important symbol called the Ankh. The Ankh depicts immortality and life. It is also connected with Isis and the planet Venus. Could these carrying devices be transmitting the same kind of energy? Anton Park's research has traced the re-emergence of Enki to Egypt and, as a byproduct of his death, the building of the Great Pyramid. In my view, the Great Pyramid was built by Isis. I believe it was created to reincarnate Osiris into Horus. It is quite complicated. The Osirian, the so-called aquatic temple dedicated to Osiris in Abydos, Abaju in Egyptian, means it is located in the city, which is, according to Egyptian history, the first city of Osiris. Yet, to be able to find seashells on a temple located in the middle of the desert, you have to go back thousands of years, at least 10,000 years. Why would he have made such a temple with aquatic features? Because Osiris, who is also Inky, they are the same person, had amphibian genes. Osiris, Inky, was killed by his nemesis Set, who is in fact in Lille, during one of their many battles. It took place in Abydos, which also corresponds to the Sumerian Apsu, where Osiris's aquatic temple can be found. The texts clearly state that all of Osiris's servants were slaughtered during a battle, as well as Osiris himself, who was crucified on a tree. This is how he died. Isis is quite a character. She can't really be found in Mesopotamian literature. Although she could be considered the goddess Ninti, she is the woman who lives in the great deeps, underground. I think that these underground passageways could correspond to the ones we can find under the Giza Plateau. We know that the Giza Plateau is full of underground passages. I believe that the clan of Osiris lived there. As far as the resurrection of Osiris into Horus is concerned, Isis organizes it. The texts are very clear about that. And we understand that she used Osiris's genetic code to create Horus. She created the Great Pyramid in order to accomplish this task. The Great Pyramid allowed Isis to find Osiris's soul again. We don't really know how, but she would have put Horus's genetic code in the pyramid. She would have been able to create another body using Osiris's genetic code, the so-called UF in Egyptian, body. And thanks to the coding of the Great Pyramid, she reached Osiris's soul so it could come into the new body of Horus. Although the dating of the Great Pyramid has been argued by different scientists, there is evidence that below the monument, something existed there that was much older. When we look at the Great Pyramid, the Second Pyramid, and Third Pyramid, there's no doubt in my mind that they were being reused, should we say, partially reconstructed, built upon during dynastic times, just like the Sphinx itself was being repaired during dynastic times. But I'm also convinced that at least the core of those pyramids, particularly the Great Pyramid and the Second Pyramid, go back to a much earlier period. So for instance, the Great Pyramid is actually built on what I would call a sacred mound. And this is acknowledged even by the Egyptologists. Now they say it all goes back to the fourth dynasty, circa you know, 26, 2500 BC. But my analysis is that at least the core, the original portions, for instance, the descending passage, the subterranean chamber, go back to a much earlier period then it was built over, and I think some of that building over it goes back to 
prior to dynastic times. Could this be proof of the clan of Osiris and their knowledge? And could this group have harnessed the powers of the universe to bring back a god? Some experts point to the fact that the Great Pyramid itself has always been connected with the afterlife.